Okay, welcome everyone. Yay, we're live on the new moon. Happy new moon, everybody. And we're new moon in Scorpio. So what does that mean? Well, it means we're in water, emotion, intense emotions, deep emotions. We're in our sacral, we're in our womb, uh, we're in the dark. We're in that deep, dark depths of who we are. So uh, Nan Akasha here, Akasha from nanakasha.com. Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. And uh, the new moon energy, you've probably been feeling it all week because we've just had Sao and Halloween, Day of the Dead. The veil is already thin. That means the energies, the blocks, the density between you, your senses and your awareness and other living being consciousnesses, uh, could be my mug, <laughs> could be a unicorn, uh, could be cacao, sacred cacao. We have, uh, that's a, a sacred being to us here in the Mayan land. Uh, cacao is what chocolate's made out of, of course, and, and this is where it comes from, and we do a lot of, of bliss things with it, making sure to replenish your serotonin. So I highly recommend that during this time, you're going into self-love. Luckily, uh, tomorrow, We've got the beautiful Venus, love personified, coming into a more confident state, a sure-footed state, coming, rising up and saying, I'm ready to be seen. So today we're going to dive into some Mayan secrets, <laughs> I call them, some Mayan magic. I'm truly, truly blessed to be living here and living in uh, the Yucatan, living on the beach. Oh, it's just a pure bliss. This is my lifelong dream, truly. And the way that it manifested was not a straight line. <laughs> and, um, and I teach that in my intuitive manifesting class and in my intuitive awakening classes. And we do practice our intuition because what an exquisite time right now to really take time to be still. So that's another thing about the Scorpio energy right now is stillness. It's water energy, which is emotion and it's deep and it's that dark and still and depths. But there's also the good part of still water, still emotions is they're not moving and they're not flowing so you might feel that but there's clarity so this is the time to sit with yourself and I keep holding my sacral because we're really doing a lot of work to heal the sacral I'm even doing special sessions right now um, in the shop, shop.nanakasha.com. Links are below if you really would like a session. It's about those sacral secrets. It's about that deep, dark shame, guilt, regret, blame, victimhood that the earth has been carrying and we've all been carrying and it's in all of our consciousness. And whether you have really deep, painful experiences in this life consciously Believe me, you have multiple layers. So you have other lives and you have many dimensions to who you are. We also live on land and the land holds memory and the crystals and the rocks have been here for centuries and they see they're wise because they've seen things, they know things and they've transformed through pressure, darkness. So this time of darkness, going still, going within was very common to the Maya because they were star watchers, they were sky gazers, and way beyond. They had the first civilization on the planet they've now discovered. Uh, it goes back further than even Egypt. And it was more sophisticated in both their science chronology as well as their um, understanding of sacred geometry of energies or spirituality, as we might call it. They created the entire culture based on a sacred geometrical pattern on a very particular rattlesnake that only exists here on this peninsula. And therefore, the, the Mayan civilization flourished. They had writing and art and science and astronomy, and they had calendars that were more sophisticated than any calendars. I've done a study of all the different calendars, main calendars, and it's almost laughable. It's like looking at kindergarten and looking at, you know, the infinite truth, you know, it's like, whoa. And their understanding of that chronology went past them. So what does that mean to us right now? Well, I truly believe that all over the planet, the planet is waking up. There's volcanoes and new earth being created. The old is being melted. 
the, the shift is happening within the body of the earth and that's to the soil and to the sky and to the layers of, of, of frequencies that surround us like the ozone layer and the solar flares and the increase in different energies and the shift in the Schumann frequency, which is the Earth's crust frequency that we have to be attuned to in order to feel good in our body because our body is made from the Earth. So the crystals are waking up and they're very wise and they each have a specialty just like us. They each came with a particular makeup with a particular kind of energy. And more than any of us now, the ancients, uh, and including the Mayas, understood that energy, life force, consciousness, gods or goddesses, we think that the ancients put it that way. But they weren't stupid all the time, right? They evolved highly sophisticated things by watching, by sitting on the top of, of observatories and watching all night. Um, I have a beautiful earring of Mayan glyphs that means uh, one of them is star watchers. And when you go out in the jungle here, which we're going to do, we're going to do our, our retreat. Yay, finally, again, uh, March 2022. What it's going to be amazing because 2022 is all about the Trinity coming together, the three parts of you coming together in unity and the world beginning to build a new paradigm of unity. So the Mayan pyramids are built uh, on waves of consciousness. And this is an obsidian, which is a common stone, comes from here, very protective, very excellent in this time. So get yourself some obsidian because you're gonna be sitting in your dark hearts. And the more you accept it, the sooner it's going to reveal its strengths, its secrets, its powers, maybe its origins to you. And then that energy can be free. So what I love about living here is nature. I love the exquisite blue skies almost every single day. I love the beach, the ocean, of course, and it's called the Emerald Coast. It's called the Flamingo Coast. We see flamingos fly over us almost every day. And behind us along here are lagoons where they live. And they're all born here. That's very magical to me. <laughs> They're the only bird in the world that looks like this, right? There's pink salt flats where we gather crystals to use in ceremony, to cleanse, to, to put in our bodies, to consume. That is very, it's covered in, in pyramids and sacred sites and temples. And um, so all that frequency is right here every day, every day, right? So I'm channeling that right now because I've been living in this uh, Yucatan Peninsula for five years now. I'm stunned and amazed that it wasn't planned. It was totally because I kept going. What's underneath that? Who am I? How can I be aligned to my truth? Uh, upgrading my uh, understanding, freeing myself from these low dark energies. So every time you free yourself from a paradigm, maybe you no longer feel you know, lack of self-worth or you don't worry about people pleasing, but you still have challenges with money. Or maybe you feel um, like your spirit and your purpose is coming forward, but you're afraid to open your heart or you're afraid to speak up because of some old energy that's in there telling you some story, whether you can hear it or not. <laughs> So the beauty is this stillness time right now. We're in the new moon. That's darkness, right? That's the moon and the sun kissing. It's balance in a sense because it's like the equinox, which is why I do my retreats on the equinox. All these temples here align in one way or another with the sun, the, with pyramids in Egypt, with it, the energy here is just mind-boggling. <laughs> and then you've got iguanas everywhere who are intuition, uh, they're guardians uh, of the sacred intuitive portals and codes and information in the pyramids. Uh, we've got a few that live in our yard. They've uh, taken up residency in one spot of our wall. So it's just too much fun to be able to look at them, to be able to see them every day. We say, hi, we're, we're looking to name one of them. We want to let it come to us. I've been calling him Carlos. <laughs> and so Mayan uh, wisdom was based on the flow of this solar X. And you see it all over the carvings here. This sacred geometry, the flow of life. You move forward, but you don't move this way. You move up and down. You move back and forth. And then 
when you keep your head up, you keep your focus forward, you stay here. You're like, I'm in this body and whoa, I'm experiencing an up. Okay, whoa, I'm experiencing a down. They understood to speak to the wisdom in these uh, plants, in the, in the earth. We say, why in, 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 mother, I am here. We bring blessings in Kopal and we use the resins of the trees to put in our walls here called Jakum and to use this incense. And so I uh, gather all of this together for the retreat and create this super sacred five day uh, space for us to be in. And I'm bringing over my favorite ceremonial shamanic leaders and cacao goddesses. I'm bringing them over <laughs> from the other side of the peninsula. They're gonna be with us for a day or so each, the first and the last day. So we're gonna have these sacred ceremonies. That's the other thing I love about being here is there's a mixture of cultures. There's there's Aztec and Maya. There's wisdom that's coming from the land and the pyramids when we go there and we go regularly. And um, we will go to three sacred pyramids for the retreat. We're going to go to Uxmal, which is just beyond stunning. It's, it's better than Chichen Itza if you've ever been there. It's enormous. It has uh, the Pyramid of the Moon, Pyramid of the Sun, a great pyramid. And it has codes for ascension. It has the Sacred Feminine University. It is just a beyond belief. And we're going to stay overnight because they just started doing a brand new nighttime sound and light show where you walk through the pyramids as it projects this light projection uh, onto the to the buildings so they had a kind of outdated light show that we went to with my last retreat two years ago <laughs> right and the thing about it was it was or three years ago is whatever it was it it was just an honor to get to be in the ruins, in the city, in this sacred space at night, right? To me, I just put on my headphones and put on epic music and I looked at the stars and I looked at the buildings and I tuned into the energy of the ancient Maya. I'm standing right there. We, we, we used to sit right in the huge quadrangle um, filled with all these double-headed ascension of plumed serpents. So the idea of the serpent, the sacred, they called it Khan uh, uh, Ku, which is sacred. The Kuku Khan is the guide to ascension, the guide to what's sacred within you. And it had sacred geometry on the back, which they interpreted and built everything from. All their pyramids, because they're not true pyramids like this, they're step pyramids. They're based on the, the, the square and the triangle and the different sacred shapes in this flow. And then that's how they extrapolated their time. They figured out their calendars that are more accurate to this day than anyone else based on understanding this frequency. And they had carvings that showed this sacred serpent standing up and, and speaking, things coming, speaking to them. That means that they, they began to intuitively or at whatever level they were capable of. We don't know what they were capable of. We don't know what we're capable of, um, but it ever forms. So if you're clairvoyant, you might get visions. I get a lot of visions now. I didn't in the beginning. If you're um, naturally hear or see or sense or feel things, whatever way you receive information right now, it's going to be really more intense, wide open, maybe a little too intense, maybe feeling like inviting you to expand. So I want you to go in with this wisdom. Know that within you, you have the same rhythm. So they took that and understood it to be movement. And they would watch as the serpent looked like it was dying because its old self no longer suited it. It began to molt. And to an observer, it looks like the snake is dying. And then right when it looks like it's about to leave its body and the whole thing's going to be dead, it comes out of its skin. Now it has to sort of rub against something that can kind of grab onto the skin. But when it comes out, it's shiny, it's new. Everything about its new skin is already formed. And this particular snake had rattles. And every time it molted, it formed a new rattle. And it was fully formed when the skin came off. What does that mean? Well, if you think of metamorphosis, if you think of butterflies, the caterpillar goes into a cocoon, it melts down into goo, and it rebuilds itself from the same ingredients 
Nothing's added. Nothing's taken away. This is the same as you. You can melt to your old self. You can go deep in your sacral and understand I'm carrying a lot of shame around this. I don't even know why I feel all this fear or why this feel this guilt, or I don't even know what it is. I don't have a word for it. I'm just ready and I'm willing to sit with it. Go in and be in the still new moon. Know that you're surrounded in love because the new moon is the womb and it's being held by the sun and it's being kissed by the sun. So you're in a safe and sacred place. And the other thing about the Maya is the sun. They understood that the sun wasn't just, oh, the sun feeds the plants, thank you, and had some weird superstitious belief and and all this nonsense. (laughs) It, It meant that they they, they talk to the sun. The sun is a conscious energy. It is one of the highest frequency energies, and it's increasing with solar flares. And scientists are saying, oh, this is bad for us. No, it's inviting us to raise our frequency. So weave to the sun. Invite the sun into your pineal, into your third eye crown pituitary to this whole area. It has to awaken to the next level. Your chakras, your energy centers, you have to allow them to also shed the old way of being. So they would watch this happen and they begin to understand who they were too. So they see Kukul or Quetzalcoatl to the um, Aztecs as understanding the frequency of flow and shedding the old, emerging. And when you shed the old, here's the cool thing. If something in your life is dying and going away, or you feel like it should, or you feel restless, or you feel unhappy or unsatisfied with what is, that's okay. Sit with it. Listen to it. Don't try to ignore that part of you because it's trying to speak to you. It's saying, please, please, please. Okay, please listen so we can release this heavy darkness. So I call the sacral center, it's your creative center, but it has all of these hallways and it's, and most of them are, are locked. They're like dungeons with prisons and cells and, and pits of despair. And we put parts of us away in these places and it's aligned with all of our other lives and it's aligned with all of the other things that have been going on in our soul. Not all of them, but we, we connect to certain ones. So you're not here just for you. You're not in this alone. You're never left alone. You have massive guidance. And when I live here every day, everything is speaking to me. The type of bird that I see, we have those um, loon-like birds called cormorants, and they love this area, and they fly by us a lot, and then occasionally they stop, and they float, and they swim underwater. And I think, how amazing. They swim underwater, they float on the water, and they fly in the sky. That's a pretty awesome being. Why would you choose to be that? Would you like to try that for whatever, however long they live, five years or something? Like, hey, you know what? I think I'd like to be able to do all the worlds. Well, guess what? You already have that capacity and it's encoded within you. When we go to these sacred sites, they begin to awaken you and you begin to awaken them. When you walk on this land, when you come into my home, which is where we're going to have it here under the coconut trees, we have this gorgeous pool, we have a steam room, we've got a palapa, we're going to have hammocks, we're going to have, we have the beach, we have shells, we're going to have these total love cacao day the first day and bliss chocolate ceremonies and my gorgeous cacao goddesses are coming over and they're going to cook for us dinner and lunch and treats and cacao mousse (laughs) and they're going to do an amazing sacred ceremony. These are the lovely ladies who did our spiritual wedding for us in February and two Michelle is a dear, dear, dear friend, and I know that we have lives together where we agreed to come back together in this life and do these. So she has been with me since my second ceremony, uh, since my second retreat at everything I do. Um, There's cacao seeds roasted with honey, and cacao opens your heart. So the whole first day is about healing your heart and opening your heart and dropping all that heaviness out of your heart. And we're going to use the Mayans understood chakras. They call them chakras with an L. And uh, chakles, chakles probably. And, um, And they understood that you had certain spaces within you that needed to be developed. Well, we not only have had a very, very little bit of communication and education around our spiritual anatomy, around the part of us that's way bigger than just our body. And we need to take care of our body. We need to take a shower and we need to feed it and we need to drink water and all of that. However, 
We have this enormous spiritual body, emotional body, mental body, and we are creators. We're creating the world. We're creating this and we're creating our body. So when you watch or think about embodying, allowing this frequency, they called everything measure and movement, measure and movement, measure and movement. And therefore, like the Egyptians and some other, you know, Stonehenge, uh, their pyramids were built aligned to the sun coming up on the equinox or the zenith going overhead um, and starting the year or the solstices. And all of these different things were taken into account. So they didn't think they were here alone and they thought way past themselves. They predicted all the way to right now and beyond. They could look at this measurement system that they developed and all the calendars that interwove with each other, each having a different length and having, th the complexity of it is stunning. But the point is, is that when you come here, you have a reason. When I came here, I came in college, and um, so it was 1980, and I came to Cancun with a college trip, and um, they took us to Chichen Itza, and I didn't really think anything about it. I liked it, I took pictures, you know, I'm there with Cuckoo Khan, the snake head, and we got to climb the pyramid and go inside and see the, the Jaguar throne. You can't do any of that stuff now. And, um, and it was awesome, and I thought, great, whatever. And then I met Chris, and I went through, I was going through a divorce, a horrific bankruptcy, everything fell apart in my life. There you go, I shed my skin. Um, I had a daughter died, and I had worked really hard uh, on building my own businesses, and they crashed, and no one paid me uh, at the end of the 80s, and I, that was another shedding of my skin. Everything I believed about who I was, everything I believed that I had been taught, work hard, do this, do this, trying to please everybody, blah, 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 it all crashed, and I didn't know who I was. It's like stripping, shedding that layer of, that's keeping you stuck. You have a layer of beliefs and energy, and Scorpio is gonna take you there, and the stillness is gonna be there to receive you, and the new moon is holding you right now. So I invite you to project yourself over here to this beautiful Mayan land. And to get a picture or, or look at this, I'll show you some pictures in a minute. And begin to tune in. And I'm going to give you the sacred prayer that we say that keeps you safe and protected wherever you go. You don't have to be here to use it. You are talking to the mother, to Mother Earth respecting nature, the powers of nature, respecting the magic, the energy, respecting the celestial energies. So they watched the stars and tracked them, but they could see things past things. They knew the Pleiades were there. They had a name for it, right? But they knew all of these different things that, that we know some of now because of science. Why? because they were intuitive and they constantly were doing food ritual. They lived in both worlds all the time. They didn't do their spirituality and then do their physical 3D. So on this five day journey in March that we're gonna to take together, we're going to start with this love day. You're gonna be spawed all up and loved all up and I'm gonna feed you into dinner where we're gonna do channeled readings and it's just going to be the most amazing, loving meltdown because I want you as we move to the pyramid the next day, I take you like that snake, like that rhythm. I take you into the flow. Life goes up and down, people die, you get sick, this happens, you thought this was the success of your life and then it failed, okay? That's just the way it is. But our current society cultural conditioning has told us that we should just be successful going up, up, up and never have a failure or they're telling us what is a failure or they're telling us what we should do to be a good person. All of that is fading away. You know it is. You wouldn't be here if that wasn't true, right? So the idea of shedding the old and just like the butterfly emerging, the butterfly is forming while it is in the cocoon. The bamboo is growing underground for like five years before you actually see it. It's like, what the hell's going on down there? And then bam, it grows really, really fast and it takes over everything. Ah. So what if that was you? You were the bamboo and you're doing this, or maybe you're the volcano energy right now in Gaia, just bubbling and melting and taking down old structures and rearranging where people live and building new earth. This is what we are doing too within us. So when I look at the stars every single night, and I look, if it's cloudy, I look past it, I reach to the moon, I can watch things track. Um, half the year we can see the sunset and sunrise on the beach, and uh, the rest of the year we can see it up here from the balcony. 
uh, because it travels this way. And that connection to nature, that connection to the sun, to understanding that the sun is bringing codes and energy, and it's bringing it. If you just spend a little bit, gaze gently, just in the very, very beginning or end of the day, into it with your eyes, close your eyes, and really feel it, draw it in to your brain area. Now, it's going ideally to the pineal, but this is a, a form of a solar initiation. And the Maya have a special temple that's very close to my house called Sibyl Shaltun, where on the equinox for about three days at sunrise, the sun comes through this temple. And they called it a, a Maya solar initiation. And it comes through and you stand and it hits you right here. So this is one of the things we're going to do for this retreat. And we're going to go to two other temples, one where we're at the top of a pyramid that looks just like Chichen Itza, a big pyramid. It's a little smaller. And um, it's still got Kuku Khan, the temple at the top. You can see the head and the tail. And we sit there, uh, a meditation jungle for as far as you can see. And these activations, when we do them on the pyramid, you are, like I said, you are carrying some special codes. You don't know what they are. Wherever you go, you're there for a reason. You might just be being you in a room and it somehow is easing the pain of somebody there or someone dying. All right. So be you everywhere you go. And when you do that, you start to understand that these chakras, these chakras, they're sacred, but they are, they need to be shed too. They need to have the old container, the old muck, the old, uh, it, to me, they look like they have a little plastic case around them and you need to take it off like a cocoon. So this is going to be a chakra journey. We're going to activate nine chakras, root through crown and earth star and soul star. And each pyramid is aligned to two different ones. And when we're here the first day, we're going to be doing heart and higher heart. And then the last day, we're going to be having an ancestral ceremony here with Christian and all of the beautiful, if you've seen my online ceremonies, uh, with all their feathers and their dancing and the music and the fire, and right here <laughs> next to the beach. And they're going to do an ancestral ceremony to balance us because the equinox is about balance. And that's what happens when we allow our heart to melt this is a great moment to just hold your womb and love yourself. Give yourself the love that maybe you don't think you got and give yourself an opportunity to be and feel a sacred, loved person. So when we move through that, we're going to be moving through melting the old energies, healing deep within. So my work, I take you, do multiple sensory things. I combine the sacred sites with the sacred ceremonies, with my activations, with sacred food, with crystals, with all these energy work, all these different things. And you can see all the people who've come have just been completely blown away. Their intuition expands their ability to see. Usually after an activation on a pyramid, people will open their eyes and they're still seeing colors and they're seeing energies. And sometimes the, the sky looks very close and there's uh, tons of past life memories. And we've had two retreats where we, as a group, had a a group conscious memory of a life together at a particular pyramid, not the main one, but another one on a huge site. And um, so the most stunningly magical things happen and you have your breakdown in a loving space, right? You let go of the old and the loving space and then you get to go through each one of these. So we're going to use the Mayan uh, pineal activation. We're going to use the pyramids and activate sacral, solar, heart, throat. We're going to activate the crown. We're going to activate the root. And we're going to get all of this aligned to your new unity frequency. So the top of a nine-step pyramid is the ninth wave of consciousness. That's where we are. And it's about unity. And 2022 is unity too. Unity. Unity with yourself. Unity with others. Unity with the world as it is and the one that you are now creating. So this is a portal. The equinox in March is a portal that is opening to the new energies of 2022. So we may have the new year in January. However, that first few months is like um, a transition zone. 
right? Where we're going to be transitioning out of 2021. And it's a major shedding. To me, it's like, okay, now we're like, I'm ready. I've grown my new rattle. So the rattle's on a snake and they can get to 12 or 14 or more sometimes are considered very sacred. And um, this particular snake has a human face on its tail right below the rattles. So when the rattle is up, it looks like the human head is here and the rattles are like a crown. And the more you live and shed the old and you rebirth into a new you, then you've grown a new rattle or a new crown. All right, so these are the kinds of sacred energies and ceremonies that we're going to be accessing from the land and the flamingos and the salt and the beaches and all the beautiful things. So when you allow yourself to shed the old, there can be grief, there can be pain, there can be fear, there can be um, a shocking amount of crying. <laughs> uh, somebody said the other day, I've just been crying so much, and uh, one of my clients was texting me, and I said, yes, I, I've been crying a lot. And I walk around, I chant, and I sing, and I do some crystals, and I write, and I create, and then I cry, you know, and I'm in that flow. I'm accepting, accepting. So especially right now, it's the perfect time to accept. So let me share, um, okay, looks like it's working, hopefully it's working. Uh, let me go ahead and, and share some beautiful photos with you. Now remember, photos give you a, um, oops, try to do this fast as possible. Uh -huh. Photos are cool now because digital photos actually capture the frequency. <laughs> they capture the frequency, the energy of the item. So we can do very powerful things using that. So this is me a month or so ago uh, for the Equinox. And um, this is uh, Ushmal. And this is called the Pyramid uh, of the magician, but it's actually the moon, the feminine pyramid. It is, of course, based on the sacred rhyme, rhythm, and measurement of the sacred uh, ascension guide. And it's also, uh, it's, it's huge, it's amazing, the energy is amazing. So this is one of the pyramids we'll be walking around at night, lit up, and then the next morning, on the fourth day, we actually, we're gonna be staying across the street at this gorgeous luxury lodge with this beautiful pool with, with turtles on the bottom, like like tile turtles, and, and it's just adorable, I love it. And we're gonna go in first thing in the morning and do a sacred activation for our chakras of the sacral and the solar plexus. Those are the two that we're gonna activate at this particular place because it's the moon pyramid, then there's the sun pyramid, and then there's the great pyramid that holds the codes of the two together. So as we awaken our kundalini, it isn't some weird crazy thing. It is that serpent energy, that flowing, undulating energy that creates life. And those two dualities need to balance, and that is why we are doing this at the equinox. And when in between the equinoxes, we go deep into the dark. So we're headed towards the winter solstice, which is the shortest uh, day of the year, the longest night, the most dark. So this is our sacred prayer in Mayan, is Wayaninin. Wayaninin means mother, I am here. If you say this wherever you go, you will be acknowledging all the sacred life force. So even if you're in a corporate building, that building is built from materials that vibrate and are holding a shape and the earth underneath it and the people inside of it and on and on. So when you enter the, be the water and the ocean, when you enter a sacred site, when you enter you know, a, a meeting, why and in, in, mother, I'm here, immediately you, you fall into communication and co-creation with Gaia. You feel more grounded and you come more into your body. So being Maya, was about really being here, being in the physical, because you understood that you were also spiritual. You understood that there were these different layers to life, and that was just part of your consciousness. It was as important to live your spiritual life as it was to live the con concrete, practical life. So when you come to this retreat, that's part of the energy we're gonna tune into, is balancing those two amazing ideas, or we used to call it walking in two worlds, but now we know. I was with a friend the other day and she said, 
Now, I know we're sitting here in 8D, but we're also here in 3D, and I'm very confused about how that works. What I want to share with you is there's lots of Ds, and it's, it's the thing right now to say, oh, 5D, 8D, or whatever. You know, many years ago, uh, my mentor was, was taking us to 13, 13th dimension, and I don't know what. I stopped worrying about what dimension or D I was in. I started looking at the scale of consciousness. And when I did that, those are dimensions. And I understood from a much more practical perspective, oh, how I'm feeling, how I'm thinking, that's making up the dimension that I'm in. And therefore, everything is reflecting that. So if I'm feeling full of shame and guilt and, and anger, then I'm carrying that, I'm projecting that, I'm attracting that, I'm seeing that, I'm vibrating with that, and I'm creating more of that. So the, this equinox in the spring is going to be Mayan magic, third eye awakening, and Maya solar initiation. That's for the pineal. Um, and that's at that temple I was telling you about. Nine chakra unity attunement. So we're going to have the ancient Maya solar initiation and uh, chakra upgrades everywhere. This is my home. This is where we will be meeting. This is our headquarters. And on day one and day five, we're gonna be here having sacred ceremony uh, with our different guides, as well as enjoying this beautiful. So this is literally right out in front of my house. And I want to invite you to my house, okay? Because 2022 is gonna be completely different. And when you're still looking back, if you're still looking back, you're, you're not shedding your skin, or maybe you've only shed your skin a little bit. So this is truly about entering and really shedding the whole thing because it's a new energy game and we're going to struggle, right? We're going to struggle if we don't align to the new. And that's true starting right now today because we're going to go through this month to the 1111 portal. And when we walk through that, we want to be done with this deep, intense, gooey emotion stuff. So when you sit with it now, right, then you can move into the, the powerful, the expansive energy and the eclipse and the solstice and all of that. And then we flow right into the equinox. So it's time to awaken the seat of your soul, which is so deep that if the chakras aren't balanced and attuned to the new highest frequency and to your soul's signature frequency, you can't align with the infinite source abundance. And you need to, you need to be in flow. What does that uh, sacred serpent flow mean? It back and forth, shedding the skin when it's ready, trusting, letting go of the old shape, forming that new crown and emerging a new shiny, beautiful you with a new awareness around you, a new halo, so to speak, okay? So we're going to do the activations in the guidance I do in the house and at the temples of the chakras. And we're going to do specific things to each uh, temple and each place where we're at so that we can realign all of your personal chakras, also your soul star and earth star and your third eye, especially the crown third eye area. And we're attuning to the new frequencies of 2022 unity and golden spiritual sunlight, understanding that we are being fed in every minute with everything we need. So I told you we're going to be here. We're going to hug and have all kinds of beautiful, yummy things happen. We're going to wash away the past. It's going to be allowing the ancestors to come, the ancestors of light, the ancestors that are for your highest good, for the crystals and the the guides and the nature spirits and the earth and the um, Atlantean energy and the bee in the ocean and there's also the the Chicxulub uh, meteor in our in our waters right out here and the dolphins are out here and the mermaids are out here so there's going to be so many of these energies that are going to be during this purification and we're going to do a lot of water things in the pool in the ocean we're going to go to a sacred cenote or an underground uh, cave with purest water you've ever experienced in your life uh, so that's uh, Ushmal, you can see the top of it, the moon pyramid. And like I said, we're going to have all these things to support us. And it's really about abundance in a sense, because when you shed the old and recognize that down deep within you, you've been growing, you're ready. You have new enlightenment, new skin, new expansion, new perspectives, and they're ready because the golden age needs you to be focused on your frequency of optimal perfection, of function.
And so that optimal flow, accepting and moving back and forth and following the measurement and movement of what's happening, you don't struggle, you don't force. Instead, you say, oh yes, this is who I am, this is what I would like, and this is what's happening right now. And you flow them together. It doesn't mean you have to wait to be you, it means you need to be you now because your health will increase, because your flow will increase, and you're gonna let go of old things that don't serve your health. Your wealth and income, wealth and uh, friendships, wealth and happiness, wealth and money, wealth in every sense, and your spiritual well-being, all of these things will begin to flow. We want to bring you into a new flow. And so the final day, I'm going to lead you through an activation um, at the house where I'm going to do energy healing, I'm going to do all kinds of things, and I'm going to weave all of your chakras together into a new light antenna where they're flowing together, and we're going to connect you deeper to your uh, eight original cells at the base of your spine. Okay, now we are very near to Merida, so on the way back from Ushmal on day four, we're going to spend a little time in Merida. It is gorgeous, uh, colonial, there's uh, fun places to go, and we will have the option if you want to stay for dinner, you can. And then uh, this is one of our cacao goddesses, the, called Apapacho, and Michelle and Yori are going to be coming to work with us. They're going to have copal, they're going to have music. It's just a beautiful, they're, they're beautiful divine feminine energies that are going to pamper you. So because we're all awakening, that's what's beautiful is we're raising our frequency and this is all about you receiving. So when you decide to come to this retreat, you're deciding to receive. You have to receive first, how can you give anything? Someone had to build your body and you had to get in it, right? You had to receive the body to get in it. Right? And then you had to receive the food before you could feed yourself. So we've forgotten that through the guilt of saying, hey, you have to give, 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 and you can't receive, is you have to receive first. So we're going to feed you, feed your heart and feed your soul and reconnect you to the wisdom of the ancestors. You'll be amazed. The cacao will speak to you. You have such a beautiful heart opening. And the Mayans magic, the light here, the secrets that hold powerful truths, they're going to be revealed to you when you're here. So remember powers, life force, divine talents, they're within you. So when you feel the stirring, like it could be dissatisfaction, it could be disappointment. These are speaking to you. They're saying, this isn't working for me. Okay. Is it my mindset? Is it that I truly am? No, this is no longer serving me. This is the time of stillness. Remember, go down, go within. Maybe tune into these beautiful sacred spaces. Go to the website, take a look at some of the photos of the places we're going, and we'll be adding more. We had some technical difficulty. They had to rebuild the page this morning on a completely different platform. So, um, but we'll be adding more and more photos so that you, I love photos because you can see the places we've been and you can see this. And the sun energy is coming through right now. I'm having to close my eyes. It's, it's coming so strong right here into my third eye and between my eyebrow. So if you're feeling that, it's definitely coming through for us right now. Thank you so much. So we give great thanks to this solar power and to the ancient wisdom of the Maya of light and love. And we ask, Wayaninin, Mother, I am here. I am here with an open heart and an open mind ready to receive the gifts that are ready for me. And I'm ready and willing to shed and release to accept and understand, lovingly allowing the new moon to hold me so that all of this old pain and fear that I've shoved deep, deep down can be accepted and released and I can relax in every cell of my being down, down, down into my root. So allow your body to relax, close your eyes, and sink into your sacral center. Feel your cells letting go. Let your shoulders slump. Let your face go limp. Take a breath in and then oh, let it out. You've been carrying too much. 
I'm feeling the energy of Maya Pan, one of the sites we're going to go to. It's the, it's coming through me very strong. I feel a beautiful Mayan maiden with blue paint on her face and turquoise in her hair. And her hands are my hands. <sighs> and she's saying, let go, put it down. It's too heavy. It's too heavy. When you understand the sacred wit rhythm of the kanamate, when you understand that there's up and down, there's above and below, there's masculine and there's the feminine, and these move back and forth. When you hold on, you can't move with that. When you don't move back and forth and up and down, you have no rhythm, you have no balance, and you are no longer aligned with the flow that is here to feed you. It begins like you're limping, struggling, trying to stay on one side more than the other. The way that you've been taught, the way that you've learned, it has molded your head and your brain. It has molded it without a third eye, without the temple and your crown. We know that when you look through the eyes of the sacred flow, when you follow that flow, you see your feathers, you see your wings, you see your spirit. You know that it is there every day. Take your eyes and make them very small and look through them. You will see energy. You will see light, you will see life, you will see life force. Release this, and the sacral center becomes a sacred temple. It is the moon, and the solar is in the belly. The sun in the solar, when it is accepted, it warms and heals and holds the sacral, and that allows you to receive, aligning your root to this new frequency. Your energy's been saying, where is it? I don't know where to look, what to do, who to be, what to think, what to plan. I don't understand where to root myself. Where to hook into? Where do I get fed? Allow all that we have left you to speak to you, to speak through you, and bring your energy to us. Gaia heals and transports you to other places as she transforms the deepest energies. The sacred ceremonies and the sacred consciousness and the understanding of more life way beyond you, your body, your time. You are infinite. We knew this. We knew you were going to be living and we wouldn't be here now, but we still looked and we looked past this and we understood as we looked further and further out the rhythm and the waves, and the shifts, and the changes, we understood. Timeless time, flow, movement, and measurement. Become the sacred container to allow the flow through you every day. And not one flow, but both back and forth, and up and down. Shed the old. Underneath, within, when you let go of all that you thought was true, you will reveal to yourself a new crown, a new awareness, a new frequency. That's the you that's ready. It's formed. It's waiting. Allow Yumkash the sacred god of the corn, to nourish you. The corn brings nourishment, but sweetness 
and nourishment like a seed, reminding you, you are a seed. You are filled with everything you need. In the times that are dark and deep, like now, go deep into the dark. Trust. There is exquisite and infinite life around you, ready to support you. Don't carry it. Enter it. Become it. And then move through it. Let it support you, not limit you. There's a light appearing above our heads and an arrow pointing down, pointing straight down into the crown. Feel and see this. Bring your awareness down into your own crown. They're saying go deeper and deeper. Move it down through the third eye. What is the vision? What is the kernel? What is the seed of the vision for you? Gift from this Mayan wisdom. And go down now, deeper into the throat. See yourself inside of an enormous temple, a pyramid. It is vibrating. It is getting faster and faster. You feel it shaking. Its structure beginning to break down. The light building to an intensity where the old form is ready to let the light in. Allow your awareness to move into the heart. What is here? Listen in stillness. There's dark waters. They need deep contemplation. Sit in the temple on the top of the pyramid of Mayapan and feel that. Throat and crown. Now go down into the belly and the sacral and the root and reach down through this sacred pyramid shape. In it are codes for you. You receive them and go down into Shibalba into earth, into Gaia, into the underworld, and you emerge in a sacred well, a beautiful cave.